The Other Side of Fear, a Backpacker's Memoir by Jenny Rivas. Unhidden Heroines series, book number one. Chapter 30, Unhidden Heroines. After two and a half months of strict lockdown in Bogota, Colombia, it came time to get everything ready for my humanitarian flight back to the United States. I knew I wouldn't have room for everything in my suitcase after I got goodies to bring back to friends and family. So I started thinking about anything I could donate from my small collection of belongings. I got a creative idea about making a sweet care package for another woman, a woman whose presence I felt in my soul, but whom I had not yet met. How could I nurture her? What could I give that would bring warmth to her soul? For her to feel cherished, celebrated, and fortified by the love of another woman during this crazy time we were all living. I had an image of a woman holding the hand of a little girl, and in my spirit I understood that, as the person I needed to make this package for was a single mom of a little daughter. I found a big reusable grocery bag from the kitchen and put together this love package, letting my heart tell me what to put in it. I stuck in two nice blouses I had been given but hadn't worn because they were way too small. I put in one of each color of my colorful hair ties, hoping that it would bring joy to her daily routine in some way. I had several extra pairs of little pearl and diamond stud earrings from a jumbo pack I had found on clearance in some market, in some market borders ago. So I found a little baggie to put hair ties and earrings in together. I thought about what she would feel on her heavy period days because I know mine are really painful and heavy. What, I get, what could I give her so she could feel connected to her body during that time of reset? And what could bring her relief? I dug in the bottom of my backpack to fish out the quart-sized Ziploc I had always kept hidden there just in case I needed to waterproof my valuables in a pinch. It was the perfect size for feminine products, a sleeve of 800 milligram ibuprofen, the last big chocolate bar out of my own period munchie stash, a snack-sized bag of my favorite plantain chips, what I had left over of my herbal teas, and the last four tea light candles that I had. I found an extra journal that said, be your own hero on it, and I wouldn't have time to fill it before I left. I found some extra antibiotics that I had saved in case of an emergency, as well as other toiletries, nail polish and polish remover, and some non-perishable food items. After I got all this put together, I wanted to include a financial blessing hidden somewhere in it that would hopefully come in the moment she least expected and when she needed it the most. I folded a bill and hid it between the maxi pads in her feminine bag. I was eager to let my heart show me who needed to be the recipient of this care package I had put together with so much love. The next morning, with my heart leading my footsteps, I made my way toward the center plaza of Bogota with an open spirit and a big smile beaming behind my mask. Our hearts always have all the answers to everything we want to know. The tricky part is learning how to listen. So I was walking down 7th Avenue for a while when a guy with a goodie basket yelled at me, Viva Colombia! He flew me a thumbs up sign, and in spite of the mask covering his face, I could tell that he was grinning ear to ear. He was telling me that he loved my Colombian soccer jersey, so I went over to make small talk with him. We chatted for a few minutes when I noticed a quiet young woman standing a couple feet behind him, watching us. I invited her to come join us. I noticed that she had a pole behind a basket with coffee thermoses in it. Here, have a coffee, the guy offered me. No, I want her coffee, I responded. She eagerly sold me a cup, and I could tell she was very kind and also very shy. Where are you from? I asked her in Spanish. Venezuela? She nodded. This girl is out hustling from dawn till dusk, the guy told me. Her gentle eyes lit up when she smiled, a smile that came from an authentic place in her soul. Ping, ping, ping. My heart told me that she was the one. What do you have in the back? The guy asked. I'm returning some items to the rightful owner, I responded. Then I asked this young girl if she would walk with me. I didn't want anyone else to hear our conversation. Once away from the group, she asked if we could walk and talk so that she could still sell her coffee. As we strolled down the 7th Avenue, she told me her story. Her name was Luc Betsy. Because of the crisis in Venezuela, she migrated to Bogota a little over a year prior in desperate search for work. 
She had a couple of family members already there, but once she arrived and was forced to find her own way to survive because her family wouldn't help her, she had to find a way to make money, toting her one-year-old daughter on her hip and find some way to make enough to keep shelter over both of their heads and have food, formula, and diapers. She only had enough to buy one thermos and a stack of cups to sell coffee in the street. So she walked the streets all day with her baby on her hip, selling little cups of coffee day after day until she finally had enough for two thermoses. Then she eventually found a way to get her pull-behind basket, which could hold thermoses, more thermoses and free up her hands. Her baby caught pneumonia, being exposed to the cold, rainy Bogota climate, so thankfully she worked out an agreement with her landlord to watch the baby during the day so that the young mother could sell her coffee. She hustled hard enough to expand her business to four thermoses and add a mini basket to the side of her cart that held different brands of cigarettes to sell in addition to coffee. She said the more product available to sell, the better, because she takes the same number of footsteps every day regardless. She told me that her next goal was to upgrade her basket to a four-wheel cart that would hold up to eight thermoses on the bottom and a cooler on top with different compartments to hold pastries and homemade Venezuelan food, all of which would greatly increase her sales revenue per footstep. She had done all of this herself with a one-year-old baby and as a migrant worker in a country that did not welcome her. I watched the glow all around her face as she told me her story. She was so proud of it. The suffering brought her to a point that she had no choice but to reach down into the deepest parts of herself to make her own way when things seemed impossible. I was so inspired by her and I found myself relating to her in many ways. Although our lives, cultures, nationalities, native languages, and skin color were so different. What we suffered through had not made us bitter. It had made us better and we saw infinite possibility to keep growing and creating, all thanks to hard times. It made us relate to each other at a soul level that transcended borders. I explained to her what my love package was and offered it to her with every ounce of pure love from my heart, and then we hugged and we hugged. We knew how to love from a deep place, the one that only those of us who have suffered and then healed know about. Every little bit of it had come at the most perfect time in a pandemic. When sales were at an all-time low and the streets were a ruthless reality, full of hungry people fighting for their own sales to feed hungry mouths at home. She hadn't been able to do fun things with her daughter or buy any gifts, so she was excited to paint her fingernails and put in those little pearl earrings. My heart was beaming as wide as it could, imagining her finding that secret bill stashed away once she got home and really went through the bag in detail. I went to sit in Plaza Bolivar, just totally floored that it was empty, except for me and all the pigeons. I took in the beauty of the architecture of the government buildings. I thanked Columbia for starting and ending this three-year chapter. I apologized for any harm done on my part while she allowed me to have such a powerful journey, and then I let her hold me there while I cried and released so many things. It was time to tell my story. It was time to talk about what made me have that moment with Luke Betsy. I felt the bliss of pure joy surge through my body, ruminating on the experience that had just taken place, and I thought about how happy I would be if I could dedicate my next chapter of traveling to documenting stories of people just like her everywhere I went. If her story inspired me, maybe it would inspire countless others. Maybe it would inspire something big in just one person, and maybe that person would let their inspiration lead them to a place where they'd be empowered to inspire 10 more people in a big way. What if it snowballed into a bigger movement where women all over the world were empowered by sharing their story and they all found unity by healing together and continuing to rise into new layers of greatness. Before we parted ways, she gave me permission to make a video with her telling her story and that was how I launched my YouTube channel right before I closed the chapter of traveling in South America. Nearly 20 years later, my life had turned full circle to what I had sensed as my life purpose in my teens. The epiphany left my jaw hanging wide open, sitting right there on that cement block on the edge of Plaza Bolivar. It brought me full circle to the soul fire I had experienced when I was 15 years old. The first time I walked into a formal Spanish class, 
It had brought me full circle to the soul fire I had experienced at 19 years old on an island the first time I traveled to a foreign country. Not one single step along the way had been a mistake. I had to live through all these chapters to fulfill my purpose in the most powerful way now. Having been on the go so frequently around another continent for three years, being back in Oklahoma was quite an adjustment. I had assumed that I could scratch my itch for traveling by taking road trips in my Jeep. I got on my volunteer's website, the same one where I found the opportunity building a bamboo house in Ecuador, and found 10 different places here in the States that, in spite of the COVID crisis, were looking for a single volunteer to stay long-term to come house it, work on their farm harvesting food, or take care of animals. It was no coincidence that in less than a month after getting back to Oklahoma City, my Jeep broke down and none of the 10 host families to whom I had written about coming to stay as a volunteer responded. What was I going to do stuck in Oklahoma with no job, no vehicle, and no money? I searched deep within for the answer. For the first time in my life, I was void of distractions. I had worked so hard for nearly 20 years, ever since I had my first job at 15, and being in a constant emotional state of surviving had gone on much longer than that. I had never been so still for so long, in Oklahoma and sober, all at the same time. Sobriety was the key factor though, because it allowed me to truly feel, and I wanted to drink so bad. My soul started to pour into my soul started to pour over onto paper as I hand wrote every chapter of this book. I never had time to really sit with any parts of my story, and so many months of doing this work showed me how many wounds from my life I still needed to heal. Penning out my story gave me the opportunity to also sit with myself through each of those chapters from the age of 20 until now to love myself and to analyze my life in a different way. I was able to see that I had cycles. I didn't write about Jose to demonize him, but to show one example of what my relationship reality looked like. Jose was just one, but in reality there were dozens, one right after the other with similar endings. The common denominator was me. I kept myself in cycles of financial insecurity and woundedness. I was able to count how many times I noticed red flags about what I was walking into, nearly every time, yet disregarded them. It made me look a little deeper. These things didn't start after the kidnapping and the rape. They were already there. I kept asking myself why, but how did you get there? To keep backtracking earlier and earlier into my life, to find where those patterns started. That was how I found the root of my pain. The root of my pain is my father. My father began a sexual relationship with me when I was three years old, and it continued for eight years until he got me pregnant at 11 years old. I miscarried. Right after that is when I had, right after that is when that mysterious psychotic breakdown happened, followed by my first suicide attempt when I was 12. Actually, it was not just my dad, but it was also his dad who sexually abused me, and there were were a total of four men in my childhood who raped me before my breakdown landed me in that mental asylum. I can't even count on one hand how many different men have raped me in this lifetime. Why is it important to go back and sort through it? Because it impacted everything after that, and it still impacts me. Actually, I am just now opening this chamber, the deepest one within me, and it requires much hard, painful work. This kind of soul work fucking sucks. It hurts, it's hard, it feels like anguish, but why is it necessary? Because it still impacts several of areas of my life today and it impedes me from living the life of my dreams. I know now that I deserve to live the life of my wildest dreams. I will face every demon and every monster within me until there are none left. I realize I have many things related to my family that are a big mess inside of me. It will take a lot of work to figure them out, not for anyone else, but for me. While I began sorting through some of these things, I read a stack of books related to a broken family relationships, the impact of sexual abuse in one's childhood, how these things impact relationship and money cycles, and how to break the cycles. At the end of this book, I am including a list of books that have helped me tremendously in working through all these chapters. If anything I shared about my traumas and healing process resonates with you, and you desire to do your own inner work, 
My hope is that some of these books can help you like they helped me. My next book will be dedicated to telling the story of the first half of my life, how it impacted my belief systems going forward about everything and how to heal it so that I can live the fullness of the life I deserve. This is why it is important to heal. Coping with these powerful tribulations wasn't and isn't easy. I wanted to drink so bad. The pain that is still there from that chamber, the deepest chamber yet, is so great that it made me want to reach for anything not to feel it. This is what made my this is what my soul had been screaming to let out when I heard its cry the day that I lay miserably hungover in my sweat before I left Argentina. I had told myself if I could make it sober through my 34th birthday in Hardeen in Colombia, I can make it sober through anything. Then the world caught on fire when the pandemic hit and I told myself if I can get through lockdown in a foreign country sober, surrounded by others drinking, I can get through anything sober. And I did. And I told myself, if I can get through doing this level of healing while in Oklahoma, with no job, no car, or money, sober, with the person who terrorized me more than anyone still alive and living in town, I can get through anything. I celebrated my year of sobriety from alcohol on November 1st, and I don't plan on ever looking back. Drinking so much alcohol for 15 years of my adult life never let me feel. It is imperative to feel in order to heal. There are no short shortcuts to that. While I wrote this book, a friend with whom I had not spoken in years gave me a surprise visit one afternoon. She emotionally confided in me that she was secretly surviving an abusive marriage, and although she wasn't ready to leave it yet, she watched the YouTube video of Luke Betsy sharing her story at least a dozen times. Every time she watched it, she felt inspired by the strength of another woman and gave her hope and courage to keep choosing to face life every day. I was once again realigned with my life purpose. Gosh, the local people on the streets of Bogota looked at Luke Betsy down their noses. Just one more meek, unwelcome Venezuelan refugee fighting for her space to sell coffee for coins. But look at her power to inspire a woman on another continent by having the courage to share her story in a 12-minute unedited YouTube video. Her sharing her story made her unhidden, and I knew that me sharing mine would make me unhidden as well. I was ruminating on one of my favorite quotes by Nora Ephron. Above all else, be the heroine of your life, not the victim. When the name Unhidden Heroines came to me, this, this would be the name of my book series. With my memoir being the first book and books afterward dedicated to documenting stories of women like Luke Betsy and others who came into my life. What if our stories could inspire women across borders? And by learning how the world looks through the eyes of another human, we could love and accept each other instead of being so judgmental. As I sat with my story, I relived the joy of my travels and realized how many women inspired me along the way. When I wrote about my hostile experience in Salento, seeing the mountains in Colombia for the first time, I relived the inspiration that Ruth gave to me. The girl who'd made a comment about my leggings and how I shouldn't care what people think. Why should I wait on someone else's permission to feel okay with my body? I wish I could create my own legging designs, I thought. I heard a faint whisper inside of me saying, why can't you? I had never considered such a thing. I figured out how to make a pair of leggings that were a collage of all the world's flags. Born out of the joy I had experienced in my first language classroom where I was enamored by vibrant flags. I imagined aligning with the energy of the women in all those countries. How exhilarating it would be to cross borders to meet them later in perfect timing. I created another legging design with the translation of Love Conquers All in 64 different languages sprawled all over them. The tattoo I had gotten in Arabic on my left arm from the first time I visited Bogota. What unites us all across borders is love, our ability to love others. Creating this pair further inspired me to make leggings and matching products in other languages as well, such as Chinese, Arabic, Hindi, Russian, Mayan, Egyptian hieroglyphics, sign language, and multilingual messages about love and peace. Writing about Colombia made me go back to look at all my travel pictures. And I thought, how cool would it be to make a pair of leggings that has a collage of pictures of artwork I photographed around Colombia? So I did. 
I wanted to connect to joy by wearing them no matter where I physically am and to give the same gift to women all over the world, especially to those who may not ever have the chance to go on the same adventure, adventure that I did. Writing my story also reminded me how the universe always showed up and was always working in my favor, even when it didn't seem like it. So I made a universe collection to wear as a reminder to always trust. As I worked through my story and realized that life had brought me full circle to what I always knew I wanted to do, I made another legging design out of my favorite quote, live life by a compass, not a clock, with the quote on one leg and the world map of countries and oceans surrounding it on the rest of the pattern. That pattern brought to mind the dreadful flight back to the States from Cosmel years ago when I begged my grandma to let me stay on the island, asking her why I would force myself to do something I didn't want to do, trying to fit myself into a box, waiting to live the life of my dreams until later in life. I wanted to create income for myself doing work I absolutely love to do, which is writing and travel. What if I could find a way to set up an online store where I can sell these leggings and when traveling, I can create new legging designs. By selling them, I can fund my travels. So I did. And then came the birth of my online business, also called Unhidden Heroines. I found a way to make my leggings available from sizes extra small to 6XL because like Ruth said, why don't I deserve to feel beautiful and confident just as I am? I make the coolest leggings in the world and they should be available to women in all sizes. Once I figured out how to upload my leggings for sale on my official business page, I learned to design other apparel with my favorite quotes on them so that they can inspire other women as much as they have me. I used quotes like, above all else, be the heroine of your life, not the victim. Everything you want is on the other side of fear. The world is yours. I needed a hero, so that's what I became. Nevertheless, she persisted from the tattoo on my arm when I escaped that bus driver who threatened to kidnap me. Empowered woman, empower women. What's your why? And keep rising. Make love, not war, among several others. I put them on products such as t-shirts, tank tops, tote bags, hoodies, pillows, and drawstring bags perfect for traveling. These are quotes that have inspired my whole journey, and I hope that they do yours too. They were created from a deep place of joy within my soul. And you can find your favorites at www.unhiddenheroines.com. Before I sign off, I want to share these words to the younger version of me who needed them. One, you are worthy. You were born worthy. Your worthiness is not earned. You were born with it. It is not based on your waistline, the love or validation that others give you or don't give you, the money that you earn or don't earn, the good deeds you do or don't do, or how productive you are or are not. Make sure to know what your inner belief systems about worthiness really are. When you try to create something new and wonderful, but you subconsciously believe you aren't worthy of it, it's like picking fruit to put in your basket with one hand, but gauging a hole, gouging a hole in that basket with the other. Two, don't be afraid to start over as many times as you need to. Each time you try again, you are not starting from scratch, but from experience. Each time you try, you learn something new and applying it is wisdom. Have fun with your adventure and never get tired of exploring every avenue. Three, it doesn't matter what hand of cards life deals you, your power to choose to play them however you want, and you can make anything work in your favor. Four, it wasn't your fault, not as a little girl, not as an adolescent, not ever in your adulthood. Your abusers did not take anything from you that you cannot get back. Those pieces are yours. Doing the inner work to get your power back is hard, but it's worth it and you are worth it. Five, you are not dumb, dirty, damaged, or destined for doom. It is not your divine fate to suffer. You were not born to survive. You were born to thrive. You deserve to live the life of your dreams, whatever that looks like for you. Six, don't wait on anyone to create the space for you that you desire. Blaze your own trail. You were not born to be like anyone else. When you march to your own beat, people may not understand you and they may even hate you for it, but mostly 
They will wish they had the courage to do the same. Seven, everything you need is already inside of you, baby. You are magic. You are pure magic. Eight, it is wonderful that you have a heart of gold and desire to do so much for others, but you should not, but you should always give to yourself first. You cannot pour from an empty cup. That is not selfish. That is self love. And you will be able to give from a place of true love to others when you first love yourself. Nine, I love you so much, just as you are. You are worthy of being unconditionally loved, no matter what anyone did to you, no matter what you did to anyone else. You deserve to be loved and be in love with life always, every day, no matter what. 10. Fear is your friend. It exists to show you where you need to grow and go to those places outside of your comfort zone. That is where all the magic is. 11. Your words are so powerful. Use them to plant seeds that will be a harvest of love and abundance in your life and the lives of others. Well, it's time to go. It's time to pack my suitcase for my next chapter. I have more healing to do, more things to discover about myself, more books to write, stories for myself and others waiting to come alive on paper, languages to learn, tattoos to get, leggings to create, and places to explore all over this beautiful world. I will be headed back to my beloved Columbia on another one-way ticket, but this time I'm not running. Telling my story has aligned me with my life purpose, and I plan on living it as authentically as I can. I am so excited to find new ways to create the life of my dreams, and I wish the same for you on your journey, whatever that looks like for you. Now that you know why I started traveling, you will know why I do what I do going forward. My heart in the palm of my hand leading the way. I beckon you to follow my journey. I love you. Jenny.